الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد how can we become a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be one of the awliya being an awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlike some of those people claim is not something that you inherit you don't get it from your race you don't get it from your tribe you don't get it from being born in a certain area or certain region but in fact this is something that comes from guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it comes from your worship and your good deeds and your intention as we know the conditions for our deeds to be accepted is first that we have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second thing is that we whatever we do related to worship is in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so those are the the main characteristics or main conditions for our deeds to be accepted and our steps to becoming a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's unlike those people who claim and go beyond the bounds some of the shia sects some of the uh, extreme sufi sects that believe that you know people can get to such a level where either they become a one with Allah or they become Allah or that they even uh that their imams and their leaders are infallible but no we know that this is not the truth we know that this is falsehood and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu ibn adam khata wa khayran khata'in tawabun that all the children of adam they make mistakes and the best of those who sin or make mistakes is those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what about the characteristics of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran ala innal awliya ala innal awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahsanun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the almighty he said verily the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have no fear you know they don't they don't have to fear the blamer and they don't have to fear anything because they're under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la hum yahzanun and they are also not sad they're not going to be depressed and sad because they're under the protection of Allah what kind of protection would be better than the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then some other characteristics of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-karim alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily those who believe and they have taqwa they have god fearfulness what is this god fearfulness what is this taqwa we're talking about this taqwa that we're referring to is first and foremost that the people the condition is that they believe alladhina amanu so they must believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they must believe in Allah in his angels in his books in his messengers uh in the day of judgment in the uh divine destiny the good and the evil of it those are just some of the things and the pillars of iman the pillars of faith that a person must believe among the many other things that came in the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but also that they have god fearfulness god fearfulness or taqwa is that they uh they are adherent to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited so those are just some of the characteristics of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all believers are awliya however they have different levels some people are much closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than others that's because of their relationship with their lord because of their acts of worship and their sincerity that's what's going to distinguish you it's going to be your taqwa it's going to be your god fearfulness how obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands are you and how much do you refrain from the things he's prohibited let's look at how we can get there shaykh muhammad aman ajami rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions in his book when he's uh, his book his ex- explanation of the book uh Asul Sitta he mentioned regarding how to get to this uh level how do you become a, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which all of us are in need of he said first is that the person that the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they humble their hearts and they do not become proud of their sins and they remember their sins often and they cry 
How do you remember your sin? Do you remember it by praising your sins and saying, yeah, I did this, I did that? No. But you remember your sins by feeling sorrow. Man, I can't believe I did this. Yesterday I fell into this. I watched this yesterday. I saw this yesterday. I you know, spoke about this yesterday. You f- and feel sorrow in their heart. This is one of the characteristics of the awliya, of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the shaykh is mentioning. So they feel shame and sorrow and they cry about their sins. Another characteristic, and they also perform the night prayer. You know, uh, in the middle of the night, as the Prophet said, that, the, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yanzalu Rabbuna Tabarak wa ta'ala kulu layla, kulu thuluth layla al akhir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven in the last third of the night, and He asks, who you know? Who who's up and 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 praying to him? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala asks, you know, uh, you know, what is my slave in need? I will give to him. If my slave is uh, seeking forgiveness, I will forgive him, etc. These this is the time when it is uh, recommended that one pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and humble themselves before their Lord when no one is watching. In the depths of the night, where it's just you and your Lord, and you're crying and opening your heart to Him, these are this is a characteristic of the friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Another characteristic is that they they strive and they ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So they're opening their heart and they're humbling themselves and they're asking for guidance from their Lord, and their heart is open to guidance. They're begging their Lord because they realize that all of this, all of this, uh, things that we're engaged in, and when it comes to the religion, it's about what? It's about coming closer to Allah. It's about being having Allah being pleased with you. That when you go to the grave, you're going to forget all these, all the fame you strove for in this life. You're going to forget your wealth. You're going to f- forget your children. You're going to forget everything that you strove for. You know, the the day that you wanted to look really good for the people, the day you wanted to, you bragged about this issue, the day you did this and you did that. All of that's going to be forgotten because it's going to be between you and your accounting with your Lord. And all of us will have that day when we're. Uh, wrapped in white sheets, white shrouds, and put into the earth. So what have you prepared for that? All of those those things, those people who remember that often and act in according, accordance with that, trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ways and means we come closer to Allah, that we can be a friend of His, fasting, doing an extra fast, extra prayer, and the prayer of the night especially, as we mentioned. Those are some of the ways and means in which a slave can come closer to their Lord and be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins and bless us to be of those people who He is pleased with and whom He loves.